Chris Brown here, No Nonsense Know How. Today working on this 2016 Chevy Cruze with a 1.4 liter turbo. And I wanna go over some quick information on how to replace the thermostat housing assembly on this. Super common failure on these, and this is pretty much like a part two to my part one that I'll plug in up here in the corner. So if you've got no heat in one of these or you smell coolant, be sure to check that one out too. But basically, this customer complained of no heat and the coolant bottle was pretty low. They also complained of a sweet smell. So I put my coolant pressure tester kit on here, pumped up that tank with some pressure, and then you could see that the thermostat housing right here was seeping out the bottom. Now somebody commented on the other video, you know, they should have a recall on these things. This is ridiculous. And I almost agree with you because I see so many problems with these. Anything from the water pump leaking, the thermostat leaking, the coolant outlet up here leaking, this hose likes to crack off and break on here. And then these heater core hoses on the back, these like to crack and start leaking too. So this thing is just a cooling system nightmare in my opinion. And if you own one of these, you're gonna be doing these repairs multiple times throughout its life. So anyway, with that out of the way, let's get on with the repair. You're gonna start by relieving the pressure in the cooling system, if it has any, by slowly removing this cap. Now this part's optional here, but if you don't wanna make a mess, you can get yourself a drain pan and then come down on the passenger side front and using a T20 Torx, remove this one screw from this cover here, and then you can reach behind here and get to the petcock right there. I've already drained mine out, but yeah, basically crack that petcock loose a couple turns and that'll drain out. You might need to get some pliers on it if it's too tight. All right, got the cooling system drained, ready to move on. Sorry about this background noise. Uh, the second option, instead of draining it, would be just putting a big pan under there to catch it, if you don't mind making a little bit of a mess. So we've got a seven millimeter socket. We're gonna remove these two intake boot clamps. Popped right off, that's what it looks like. Not a bad idea to take a paper towel or rag and stuff it in there so you don't drop any nuts and bolts inside the engine intake. Next, you're gonna take a pocket screwdriver, slide it under this clip here on the electrical connection. And that'll come right off like that. And take that same screwdriver, slide it under this clip to release the clip on your cooling hose. With that clip off, you should be able to wiggle this hose off of here. And just tuck that hose down out of your way. And you wanna now remove this little air hose right here. Get that off so I can show you. Now on this thing, if your car is 10 or 20 years old, it's probably just gonna break. And you might be able to do it without taking it off, but uh, to get to this bolt, having this out of the way makes it a lot easier. But the idea here is that you squeeze down on these two sides here with the, uh, the grip and then it's supposed to spread out like that. And it's not, it's not easy. It barely works. So that, you know, you might end up breaking that. Luckily, it looks like an easy hose to replace if it does break. Okay, now you're gonna wanna get in here with some hose pliers, remove this hose clamp and then push that hose off. I think it's probably easier to do before you remove the bolts on this. Once you get that off, you're gonna remove the three E10 bolts on this housing. Looks like that, socket like this, and uh, boom, remove those. I used the slip joints on that clamp, and then when you slide the clamp down, you should be able to just push the hose off. Yep, that pushed right off of there. Now remove those three E10 bolts on there. You might need a short extension like this. I'm using my Milwaukee M12 ratchet. This thing really comes in handy. All right, that slides right off there. The gasket got stuck on the block. Now you might be saying, why didn't you just replace the O-ring? That's all it really needs. The answer is, while you're in here, this thermostat's got 60,000 miles on it, so I should probably just replace that anyway. And uh, honestly, these things get brittle and crack over time. You've got a sensor in there too. And the third reason, a whole new housing is like dirt cheap. Again, I'll plug links in down below for everything I'm using in this. So it's really easy to just get the whole housing. Okay, now it's imperative that you inspect this surface for any corrosion. This one's actually really clean looking and no corrosion at all on it. So I'm ready to put, wiping it off a little bit, I'm ready to put my new one on. I highly recommend taking a dab of light oil or any kind of grease that you have and just run, run some grease around this whole O-ring on here. It'll help reduce any corrosion in the future and just help it seal better. Uh, I've been doing that for years and it seems to help for me. And now we're ready to bolt this back on. I think sliding this hose back on here and getting the clamp seated is gonna be better to do that first before you bolt this all the way down. 
Make sure to get the threads on all three bolts hand started and then you can zip them down. I don't know if there's a torque spec on these, just good and tight is fine though. All right, now I'd like to take a little dielectric grease, put a dab on this connector here, put your electrical connection back on, and then this hose here, we can click this back into place. It snapped right back in. And then we got our cooling hose to put on. Now the only tip on these I'll give you is there's an O-ring in here, which I'm not showing you a good picture, but I like to take a little bit of grease or oil and rub some lubricant on that O-ring in there. Motor oil is fine, just, just a touch. Cool is fine too, but put something on there so that when you push this on, we now have this clip recessed back down. This will just snap right into place. Just like that, nice click and that thing's on. Put your intake back into place and snug those down. All done with the repair. Now we can wipe up any residual coolant that just spilled and then go ahead and flush everything down with a gallon or two of water or if you have a garden hose. Now you're ready to top the coolant off and bleed out the system. I'll just plug a clip in right now from the other video though. Then go ahead and take some new antifreeze, fill the coolant bottle up to the appropriate level and start her up. Now we want to burp all the air out of the cooling system. So set your temp all the way up, put the blower on high. And then I like to wedge a rod in between the gas pedal and the seat to get the RPMs up to about 2000. And let that run for about 10 or 15 minutes. You can see all our water's burning off of the exhaust and you can see all the air coming out of that top hose in here. It's really a good idea to let it run until your radiator fan comes on. And this one's already blowing nice and hot. Okay, and that's that, you're all done. I just wanted to make this follow-up video, so if anybody was looking for quick instructions on how to replace this thermostat housing, know it's very similar to the other one, but hopefully this helps somebody out out there, and uh, yeah, hopefully that somebody is you. If it did help you out, consider supporting the channel by leaving a thumbs up, a comment, subscribe, check out the channel, or any of the links down below. Till next time, this is Chris Brown here. No nonsense, no how, and I'll see you next time.